All right, let's do a video overview for issue number four now. Issue number four, completed the first year of both spec. One, two, three, and four. So it was the winter 2010-2011 issue. It came out probably December 30th. <laughs> I was desperate to get it in the end of that first year, and it happened. So one, one goal met at a, a great cost of sleep and all that stuff. So, uh, cover art, again, from the same as issue three. Cover art from Jason Strutz. This is Jetpacks. So, we'll see what that has. Well, maybe you'll find out what that has to do with the rest of the issue. I should go inside. So, inside cover ad from Pyre. Thanks again for all your support, guys. Uh, one of the books there is Horns of Ruin from North Carolina native Tim Akers. So, check those out. Thank you again for your support. Uh, contents is pretty much run unchanged for a few issues now. Cover art, fiction, graphic short, features, departments, and advertisements. So thank you to all our supporters. That's great. Here we got some art from Jason Strutz um, to accompany Freedom Acres by Andrew McGowan. Now, Andy is a Durham author who I met at the Durham Writers Group, gosh, almost two years ago now. Is when I first read this story at the Durham Writers Group. Uh, time went by, time went by. I had started both spec and um, was getting some stories, and I, I just couldn't get that story out of my mind. So I wrote him and asked him and if he'd published it yet, and he said no. And here it is. I got to publish it. I'm very excited about that. So uh, the little teaser quote is, that's what you get in a down market subdivision. So this is um, a near future dystopian Durham with remote control robots and uh, total surveillance and all kinds of fun stuff. So um, Andy's a, a restaurateur and chef here in Durham. He just started the Gear Street Garden. And I uh, hope you check out his story and comment about it and come chat about it. That's the whole point of doing all this stuff, is so we can talk about what's going on and uh, see what we think. Here's an ad from Tachyon. we got Steampunk 2, Steampunk Reloaded, Flaming Zeppelins, more, more Steampunk, and more Jeff Vandermeer. So very timely with uh, Jeff coming to town in a few days. Here's a story, O Harvard Square, by Nick Mamatas. Um, this is a kind of a weird story. It's hard to categorize. Is it fantasy? Is it science fiction? What is it doing? So uh, why don't you read it and let me know? O Harvard Square. Um, the next one is kind of a soft, soft fantasy horror, The Burning Room, by David Tallerman. He's a, a British author, and he's got a debut novel coming out pretty soon. And uh, I really like this one. Again, a kind of a soft horror uh, ghost, kind of a traditional early English, not early, but, you know, uh, English countryside or English townhouse setted ghost story. I really liked it. So we published it. And then, then there's our Order of Dagonet, Fire Tower Studios, one of our, one of our steady sponsors here at Bullspec. And here's another story, A Mathematician's Apology by Don Norm. One of the ones I didn't do art for. Sorry, Don, but um can only do so much. A uh, really quirky little story. Um, if uh, I think even if you're not a math geek like some of us are, you'll still like it and get a good get a good something out of it. I know I really liked it, having studied plenty of math <laughs> in college on the way to computer science degree. Here's our one of our um one of the groups we like to support is the Durham Literacy Center, so if you're, you're around and that's something you care about, check them out. There's a really short kind of flash piece by Erin Hoffman. She's now a debut author with Pyre as well. Um, this is the sh City of Shadow and Glass. It's kind of an atmospheric, futuristic, virtual reality layered on top of reality. Again, really short, really short story. Um, let me see if I can reach over here. This is her debut novel, Sword of Fire and Sea, that just came out, I want to say, in June from Pyre. Uh, another, another spot from Bain. It's pretty much the same same spot they run with us a couple times, featuring um, Mark L. Van Name, a local author, Children No More. It's now out, now out in paperback. And here is, uh, at this point, I think the longest story we published, but uh, it's a reprint. It originally was in... The Solaris Book of New Fantasy. It's James Maxey, who's a, a local Hillsborough author. His um, his books have been coming out from Solaris, and he has another book coming out early next year called Great Shadow. 
and this takes place in his Dragon Age universe, and it's kind of a prequel, but it also stands alone and kind of sheds some light on some of the characters that we eventually will read if you uh, check out his book trilogy, Bitterwood and Dragon Seed and, and on. And so Tornado of Sparks by James Maxey. Again, one of the longer ones we, we had done up to that point. And as this um, was the fourth issue of the first year, it's part four of four of Mike Gallagher's graphic story, Close System. We went ahead and uh, I got to talk, I emailed with Mike, and we had an interview. We talked about where he, where he grew up and what his influences were, how he came up with his story. I don't want to, I don't want to give up the ending, so i got to quickly block it up, but... We had a nice little interview and uh, talked to Mike about what's going on and got a picture of him at work. Um, got a little sponsorship from Foundation's Edge for this issue. A little kind of a coupon. So check out Bull Spec. Find coupons. Go buy stuff. We also put a plug in for StellarCon 35, which was this previous March. It was a really nice little con. Todd McCaffrey was there. Um, I got to pretty much hang out at the dealer room the entire time. But I did make it out to a couple panels uh, to see James Maxey talk about superheroes and some other stuff like that. It, it was good. And next year, I think it's going to be even better. It's going to have um, Patrick Rothfuss, the author of The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I think this is the last of the happening spreads that I did. Um, kind of sad to, to see it go, but it was just one of those things that takes up a lot of space and, and takes me a lot of time to put together. Uh, we've kind of transitioned to kind of an email event list. Uh, if I ever have the space and the time, I'm definitely going to bring it back. But uh, for now, this was the last one we did. Um, we saw Richard Butner had a really cool story in Ghosts. It's a TTA Press um, anthology of Crime Wave 11. Coming, coming over from England. I got a copy of that, but it's not here. I can take a picture of it for you. But uh, it was nominated for the Shirley Jackson Award for Best short story or novelette, I can't remember what it, what the length it came down as, but you know, it didn't win, it lost to Neil Gaiman, I think, but what are you going to do? And then, oh, I actually have that around. 52 stitches. I'll take a moment and uh, to my own horn. So, yeah, I actually got published. So I got a, I have a, a pretty short flash horror piece in 52 stitches. And uh, so, you know, sometimes I have a little fun. Um, got a picture here of the big NC Speculative Fiction Night. James Gates did a great job putting that together. It was at the uh, Barnes & Noble of New Hope. We got James Maxey and Merle Lafferty and Tanya Barron. And I think it was Dan Campbell's head sticking up over there. And a big panel of authors. And it was just a great time for everybody. If you're raising hands, asking questions. Uh, one of the books we were looking forward to at that time was uh, David Halpern's Journal of a UFO Investigator. Uh, looking back at my bookshelf, I must have it at my other bookshelf. I can't show you that one, but it pretty much looks like that. Ended up being a great book. Um, this one looks so much better in the PDF because it's in color in the PDF. <laughs> but it's actually a red, green, and blue, I want to say, PYR for Pyre. This is a spread of a whole bunch of color-coded uh, Pyre titles. And one of the things Pyre is really known for is its great cover design and, and cover art. And... Um, Check out the PDF version of, of this issue, and it's a really awesome spread. I spent too many ridiculous late hours doing that. But it's basically to accompany this um, big pyre at five years and 100 books. Uh, it's an article. I talked to some other people, um, Prometheus Books president, um, some of the authors that at, uh, Lou has worked with, uh, book critic Lev Grossman, some other people, and... Uh, kind of tried to do a mini profile of, of Lou Anders, the, the editor at Pyre. And then that company is a pretty long interview, which kind of rambled all over. And it was just a great time. And I totally get what he's saying here. I have bags under my eyes I didn't have before. So I know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm way, way less into it than, than Lou is. So uh, the hours that these guys put in is crazy. And uh, the work he's done is great. So I really enjoyed doing that interview. Here we uh, featured, I want to say this, this might have been the last feature we did. Um, we, the first four issues, we had a, an excerpt in each of them. We did an excerpt of a novel, and, and I kind of stopped doing that. The rights, the rights issue started to be getting more complicated for me to figure out and have time to get it done. But uh, Bane was really easy to work with, and so we had an excerpt of uh, Mark Van Name's Children No More. So the first two chapters, I want to say, 
they're pretty short chapters. It might have been three, yeah, first three chapters. So they gave us a really good excerpt. Um, then we had a, uh, just an unbelievable personal essay from uh, Bolspec's own poetry editor, Dan Campbell. I'm going to give too much of that away. And then just a really nice long uh, interview where Dan's talking to, to Mark. And uh, just an, I think a really nice feature. I really liked it. I mean, I learned a lot about Mark through it, and I learned about Dan the, with the way he, he wrote his, the personal essay and the way he asked his questions. So it's just the kind of interview I like to read. Um, next up, we had a review of Vampire Empire, The Grey Friar, uh, book two. The Rift Walker is coming out in about a month and a half, in, in early September, and uh, they're Raleigh authors, Clay and Susan Griffith, another power book, and so Natanya Barron completed the first four issues. She was in every single one, whether it was a story, a flash fiction, a review, or something. And so uh, she, she had just a wonderfully glowing review of that book, uh, along with many, many glowing reviews that uh, popped up all over the web and elsewhere of, of the Grey Friar. An article from Alex Granados, who was uh, an associate editor of Bullspec for a while there and is still still somebody I'd turn to for help. And um, he talked to Clay and Susan a little bit. Um, they interviewed them on WNC's The State of Things. And also, uh, Alex went to the, the, the book launch and, uh, you know, checked things out. And Alex wrote another article here on Orson Scott Card on his uh, new novel, because uh, Orson also came to the Triangle. This was, boy, last fall now. <laughs> I have to work my head, my brain in reverse to read a read from Pathfinder at Quillard's Books. Uh, then we had some reviews. Um, this was the first review I got from Patrick Ward. This was an Ian, Ian M. Banks surface detail um, to make her Horns of Ruin review. From Joe Giddings. Joe has been a, just a stalwart reviewer for me. Always turns in solid reviews. Uh, Strange Affair of Spring Hill Jack. That ended up, ended up being the first science fiction, uh, sorry, the first steampunk novel to win the Philip K. Dick Award. And here's the, the sequel out now, so we can see how long it's been since issue four has been out. There's more books coming out. There are sequels to the books I was reviewing then. Um, nice long review of The Way of Kings, Richard Dansky. And another review from Richard of... Um, Stories edited by Neil Gaiman. I mentioned that uh, I was talking about the Shirley, the Shirley Jackson Award, uh, the anthology. I want to say won the best anthology, and a couple of the stories won their categories. So, uh, and then I think this is the first time I got Jason Eric Lundberg in in Bull Spec. I might have gotten an, uh, a review from him in the issue before, but um, he's been a you know solid reviewer for me since then. I have a story for coming up from him soon. So he reviewed a featherproof books book for me. And then Paul Kincaid, you should guys recognize him by now. He's a BSFA award-winning SF critic. So when I want to have a book that <laughs> it's hard for me to tackle, like the secret history of fantasy or these big anthologies that kind of are trying to do big things, I try to turn to him and he, he turns in these really solid, long, in-depth reviews. So hopefully that helps you learn about the books and uh, what's going on there. Um, the thing is, this is the second issue of Dan Campbell's edited poetry so you know I don't give him too much room to play two pages and uh, he did a great job picking some great poems for us um, Callan Fire again he's um, gosh he's been in one two I think this is the, his third issue that he's been in and he might have even been in the fourth by now I, I have to check but uh, one of our favorite contributors uh, Rose Lindberg a great poet great poem in here so you know, read the poems, let us know what you think. Uh, editorial, the, the year that was and the year to come. The last couple of editorials, I have to admit, I've mailed in a little bit. But this one, I really spent some time on, um, wrapped up, kind of reviewed all the local books that were out, what was going to come out this year. But I wanted to make sure I, I, I highlighted this book, Shine. It's an anthology of optimistic sci uh, science fiction, edited by Jetsy DeVries. And um, had a... Uh, Eric Gregory's story in there kind of starts things off, and it goes from there. And um, each story is good, and the stories together have this kind of arc of of building up emotion and tension, making the whole anthology really work. And um, you know, I've talked on and on about how important I think optimism in SF is, it, you know, realistic optimism. So I think um, they did a great job there, and that's a book that everybody should check out if you haven't checked it out already. Please uh, give it a look. So here is uh, my inside back cover ad. This is Merle Lafferty's I Should Be Writing podcast. 
um, one of those things that it's, you know, it's, uh, it was really fun to do. We kind of traded ad spots uh, where she, um, let me get a little bit of ad time on her podcast and got this nice ad in both spec. On the back here, we have Angie Shearstone. She sponsored this issue with a back cover ad for Blood Dreams. And, uh, she went on a little bit after this to have a very successful Kickstarter campaign. And now this comic is a reality. So issue one is out in most of the stores around here. Um, I got a great blurb from Warren Ellis as to what the comic is and what it comic does. It's kind of a punk vampire thing. It's hard for me to describe. I've only read the, the samples so far, but, um, definitely something to check out. And again, thank you very much, Angie, for the sponsorship. And, um, this kind of turned into a working relationship with Angie. She's done some art for me now. So, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about issue four. It's kind of cool to look back, uh, and see the four issues from year one lined up and coming up soon. I'll tour issue five.